Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Hussein. In this video, I want to describe the difference between lazy loading and eager loading. And I wanted to think about an example. And since we are in this situation with this virus going on, and uh, I there are very a lot of generous people like uh, Pomper here. Hope you've pronounced your name, Rodrigo. Uh, he's providing a JSON file with all the cases he's updating that on i think three times a day and this is a json file with all the cases that uh, coronavirus have today right and then it's it's essentially it's, it's categorized by the country okay it's a very nice uh, centralized json file and what i want to do i want to build an api around it okay i want to build a node.js api uh, express around it as you notice loading this uh, json file it takes takes some time because it's a huge data set. So here's where you shine as a developer. There are many ways of loading this file or loading any particular data set that takes long time, right? There is always the eager loading, which is when I start my application, load the whole thing. When you do it an eager way, where you load everything when you start your application, your startup time takes a hit versus the lazy approach, the lazy loading approach, when you don't load it at first, only when it's actually requested, okay? So I'm gonna start building, a, I'll build two versions of the application uh, where the, it's using the eager loading method and the second approach where it's using the lazy uh, uh, loading method and we're gonna compare the two. How about we do that, okay? so. I went to my Node.js application. I wrote this application very quickly. I used the no modern version of writing a Node.js application using the ES6 uh, modules. I'm gonna use the, uh, I have two files here. I'm gonna uh, have the code available for you guys. It's an MJS file now, not, J not just JavaScript. And the eager approach, is I'm importing the fetch command from the Node.js because I need to do a fetch, right? From the HTTP, which is this JSON URL that uh, Rodrigo have built for us and I'm using Express. I'm gonna sp spin up an Express server and I am listening on, I have one REST endpoint here by the country. So if I do slash Bahrain or slash United Kingdom, I will only get the cases for United Kingdom or I will only get the cases for Bahrain and so on, right? What we're gonna do is we're gonna load the timeline, we're gonna load that cases into a JSON file results and essentially get only the country cases for this country that we are interested in okay now this function load timeline is very interesting this is the function that actually does the call to actually fetch the url and store it on the cache and memory right that's what we are doing here however in the eager version we are loading the timeline when we start the application as you have noticed here Okay, so we're taking the head in the beginning of the application, okay? However, the lazy approach is exactly the same, but we're not calling it on the start of the application. We're actually calling it only when we are actually making the request. So the first request will take the head. And there are advantages and disadvantages of, of both approaches, and uh, we're gonna go through this. How about we do the eager approach first? Okay, so let's go change my uh, uh, launch JSON. So we're loading the egg, eager JS, and we're gonna start my debugger. Okay, and as you can see, my debugger, I actually added a loading time just when we first take it. So we started the application, we just imported 8080, and we took 138 milliseconds to fetch that file. So it's pretty, it's pretty large file to take a take a hit on. So not much, right? So we talk that, and let's just uh, test the application. How about that? So if I do localhost 8080 slash Bahrain, only give me the cases of Bahrain. Immediately I got the result, right? How about we try United Kingdom? I don't know if it works with a space. Yeah, it did work. <laughs> These are the cases for United Kingdom and so on. I couldn't find the United States for some reason in the JSON file, but nevertheless, so you 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 saw, it is very, very quick, right? So how about we close this and we try the lazy approach, okay? The lazy approach now, if I run debugging mode, you can see that I didn't even load the files. The Node.js application startup fast, 
138 millisecond faster. <laughs> Not really much, but you can see the difference if you, if you have a big data. All right, and now we're gonna try this guy. I'm gonna go to localhost 8080 Bahrain, and you can you will start feeling it. Ah, look at that! We got the data, and it took us 121 milliseconds. So the difference is not that big, guys. But as the more data you get, the more you start feeling it. So. What is the benefit of doing the lazy approach versus the eager approach? Eager approach, if you're if you're starting the application and you know your startup time is already slow, you can't cram in things in the startup of the time because this is gonna be a one-time hit and you don't really care because you're not gonna start up so many versions of this application. You're gonna start up two or three or four versions and you're gonna have a lot of consumers. So in this case, you you would like to have the eager approach where you're gonna load as much data and take as much hit as you want in the start of the application, okay? However, in the microservices world where, uh, or, or for example, on, on where uh, on, on an environment where you can't you want the application to start so fast because you are starting up so many services of your instances of your services so that you want that application to be as as fast as possible okay and you're not sure that this request is going to be consumed all the time as well so a lazy approach in this case is actually better because startup make my application start really fast and when someone actually makes a request to that particular service using this rest endpoint then takes the hit and actually uh, load the application right and unload that data and uh, what i didn't notice like what i didn't mention is like the second time by the way and the third time you can see that the loading time is actually zero <laughs> because I cached that result in the application, right? So uh, you notice that if a timeline is null, I go ahead and fetch it, else I just immediately return. So you'll see that the time is actually zero. All right, so that's the difference between eager loading and lazy loading, guys. Uh, it really depends on your use case. Think about it really hard before implementing uh, either approaches. I, in my personal work, I used both the eager loading and the lazy loading. I found uh, pros and cons for each approach. It really depends on the use case, how many times you're actually starting up the application. Usually users are, it depends really on the user and the use case, right? Users sometimes don't mind to wait if they are actually starting an application and they expect it to be waiting, like starting the application. But if they are clicking something, right, and they already took the hit and waited for the application, and then they are also waiting, that will not result in a nice user experience, okay? So really think about it and let me know in the comment section, what do you think? What do you personally think? Lazy loading, eager loading. What's your preferred method? Let me know and uh, stay safe out there, guys.